Kuna dawa, kuna dawa. Hello, 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 hello. Wali eju, hello. Wali captain, hello. Daughter, hello. Wakina mama, hello. Thank you. I've never seen a day like today. I did not have a day like today. Ladies, sit, be seated. It is such a wonderful day. This is a day that reminds me of very many years ago when we had one honorable deputy uh, vice president called Michael Wamal Wakijana. He would say this is a day that is reserved for the legions and the kings. I'll paraphrase his words and say this is a day that is reserved for the queens and the mamas of Kenya. I know today amongst us, we've got women who have come from all corners of Kenya. We have women who have come from northeastern. We have women who have come from the northern side. We have women who have come from western side. We have women who have come from Nyanza area. We have women who have come from the coast. We have women who have come from the central and we have the women who have come from all over including the islands around Kenya. And these women are all here for one purpose. To pour their hearts out and to speak what is in their minds. They are not just representing themselves here. I know you are representing millions and millions of Kenyan women who are not here. Any information that you get from here, new ideas, whatever you see, I'm sure you are going to share it with the women who are out there. And that's why we are here. It pleases me to see sincerely everybody but two groups of women. It pleases me to see the daughters of Raila. It pleases me. It pleases me to see the captains up there. And of course, all the ladies. Pleases me to see women from Central in their uniform. It just pleases me to see you girls there in your attire. If there's one thing that has worried me, I've always been worried 
what will happen tomorrow when we, my generation, and the generation coming after me are not there. Today, I'm not worried anymore because I can see the daughters and I can see those ones and I know, and I know, Mbele yuko sawa. Mbele yuko sawa na? Mbele yuko sawa na? Baba, as you, they call you, of course, you know, I don't call you Baba. But today, today, I want to assure you that the future is bright. Because you are investing the future in the hands of the young people. These are just the girls and young women. But I know there are lots and many, many more young men outside there. I'm sure they are also going to have their time to meet with you the way the women have met with you today. Sometimes I worry because whenever a rally is called, you see so many young people, but they are always boys. And I wonder, where are the girls? I know you are there. Even if you are there, in, you are there in the background. And I know your voice is stronger. Recently, I was visited by a group of ladies calling themselves Daughters of Kenya. Some of them are here. I saw, I saw her here. Daughters of Kenya. That's what you are supposed to be and that's who you are. Daughters of Kenya are fighting for the rights of the Kenyan girl. They want their space. And I'm sure in your hands you'll give them that space to be there. Sometimes I was worried again. I have two daughters, you saw them here, Rosemary and Winnie. I started doing this kind of work, mentorship of young people, political empowerment for women, when these two girls were very young. I remember Winnie was hardly five years old when I was running the League of Kenya Women Voters. And I would go with Winnie and I put her in a corner somewhere. I give her <laughs> scribbling paper, book and colors and I say, draw anything you want to draw. Huh? You can draw the ladies who are talking here. Draw the room. Draw something. I didn't know I was preparing her to be an organizer. I did not was preparing her to organize fellow young women. Today I've seen the work of your hand. You've come of age. Thank you very much. You make me proud. Rosie. My other daughter, Rosie. Eh. They did, you did not ask them that question. You should have asked them their role in the family. <laughs> Rolly, Rosie is the one that guides everybody. You need to do this. You do to do this. Rosie, as I was doing guiding people, I didn't know you were copying me. I'm proud of you too. But God, today God has given me not just two daughters. I'm a mother of millions of daughters. I'm a mother of all the millions of daughters, you included. Maybe, aha. Uh -huh. There she goes. I know they've given me a nickname. Where we come from? Calling me Min Pin. Meaning. Mama Yawatu. <laughs> Mama Yawatu. 
And as Min Peng, I always give advice because what do mothers' responsibility? To give advice, to bring up the families, and do all that kind of thing. Now, when we are speaking here, the young people who are coming, who came up here and were talking about other things, I know you are, I was asked to do two things. There were lady who talked about uh, teenage pregnancies and early marriages amongst women. If there's anything that has retarded our further development in this nation is the issue of teenage pregnancies and early marriages. These two issues robs us of women who can be leaders of tomorrow. They robbed us from getting the kind of education that they need. They robbed us from being uh, knowledgeable. They robbed us from being able to be sustain themselves. And this is something that I would advise all the mothers. Take care of your girls. Let's stop these teenage pregnancies and early marriages. I'm talking particularly to that group up there. Yes. The captains. Yes. Be your sister's keeper. Yes. I have a program called Linda Kesho. Linda Kesho is meant to deal with that. But I need volunteers. Yes. I need volunteers. Who can take this message to all the whole country, wherever people are? I'm going to contact you because I know you now. I'm going to contact you and I'm going to charge you with that responsibility. The other issue that they talked about, I think this was a lady from Kiambu. The young woman from Kiambu. Oh, there she is. Yeah. She talks about the issue of drugs and alcoholism. It is not only in Kiambu. It is everywhere in Kenya. It is ruining our children. And not only that, I think she also, somebody also talked about issue of mental health. Mental health among the young people, particularly. Why are young people committing suicide? Why are young people committing murder? Why are young people getting involved in alcoholism and in drugs? Why is there a problem when it comes to mental health, particularly of the young people? And why now? How come it was not there before? Why are young people burning schools, burning their dormitories? What is it? It is mental health. This is caused, maybe, but I think what I'm saying is right. The main cause is the kind of environment that we live in. Let's take example like in Nairobi. In Nairobi, oh, the governor is not here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God the governor is there. In Nairobi, every estate had a playground where children would play. Every estate had a, a social hall where children could go and play darts. Every estate had football pitch, but these days these things are not there. The young people cannot go and play football because it will mean they go several kilometers to find to find a club where they can play. And that club is only reserved for the members. Let's start. I know you're a mother. 
and a governor. Thanks to have a governor who is a mother also. Let's start by having recreation areas for our children. Because if they have them, they would not go to these areas. I don't know, they would not get involved in alcoholism, in drugs. The other issue is not just the environment, but also the way we are being brought up. You don't see things that encourage children and young people to do. You don't see them. And here, probably, the education system, you better check the education system again. There's too much academic work. Learn your math mathematics. Hmm? Do your geography, history, chemistry, biology, physics, what not and what not. What happened to the games that we used to have in the schools? What happened to those games? We have school A playing against school B. We don't hear them anymore. I've never heard now that Lenana School is going to play football with Jamuri High School and the win. I don't hear those things anymore, even at primary school level. I've never heard this primary school is going to compete with another primary school. They are not there. I think these things should be revised because education is not just academics. We are trying to bring up the whole child who learn other things, who can do other things. I think this will reduce the issue of mental health. Maybe still on mental health. I don't understand why we don't, we cannot put counseling and guidance in every school and in every health center in every village. These young people you are talking about, they live in those villages, but they have nobody to turn to. They have nobody to talk to. Parents are too busy making money that is never there. A child come from school, there's nobody there. Mama is too busy still trying to make money. Dad comes late at night doesn't even know how, what the children ate. So we must reverse our family values. Let's go back to our family values. And you know a family is not just the children. Many children are being brought up by house helps and maids. If you are a mother, and many of you are going to be mothers, bring up your child. In addition to that help, House help is going to help to bring up the children. Let's have counseling. And many people are going to the university and colleges, and they do these courses, but where do they work? Let's have this counseling being done even at lower level. We can rescue these children. One time I was, I was invited to talk in one of the universities, and uh, I suggested that we could have rehabilitation center in the universities, attached to the universities. And the students themselves said, oh, you mean we are mad? <laughs> Rehabilitation is not only reserved for the mad ones. And even those mad ones, they are mad because of the environment in which they live. They are our children. We should help them. Let's have more rehabilitation centers where these people can be rehabilitated and become what they are supposed to be. Because the future of this country depends on them. Sometimes you look at other things. Baba, let me address you like that. That's what I hear people addressing you. How people are addressing you today. 
Sometimes we see things that harass us, and this happening to women. Of course, we know all of us will not die young. What is happening to elderly women in some villages in Kisi is shocking. I couldn't switch I couldn't watch the television news. In one day, three elderly women, were they three or four? They are four much from their homes. They are hacked, they are beaten, they are killed, they are burnt. In the name of witches. But only because they are old women. Because they are old. God himself in his mercy has made them live long to become old. Why do you think you should remove them from this earth? Because you got better judgment. Protect our elders. <laughs> Love them. Take care of them. Don't harass them. Don't molest them. Don't kill them. Don't burn them. God in his wisdom will take them when the time comes. I know I was, I've been told so many times, don't talk about that issue. I say, why? Because if you talk about it, you'll not get the votes. Please, give up a votes, but stop killing old women at the same time. We cannot, comp we cannot comp compromise. We cannot compromise bad deeds for votes. We cannot compromise our future for votes. We cannot compromise our country because of votes. Please, let's do the right thing. Let's do the right thing, and we do it for our people. Today, once again, like a mother, I know we are the backup of this nation. Women, we are the backup of this nation. Rise up, take over your position, and shine where you are. Get up, take your position, and shine where you are. Did you ever know that when it comes to actual voting, casting your vote, women are constitute 60% of people who actually put their votes in the debate? And if all of you, Mukiamua, who to choose, is there somebody who will defeat your votes? No. You'll get it, isn't it? Before I conclude, in 1995, when the women went to Beijing, I don't know how many of you here went to Beijing, we came up with this idea of to one third gender rule. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. I thought in the manifestos of these countries, I would like to see maybe that in every county, when it comes to elections, every county we can have at least one third of the women. I would like to see that in jobs, location of jobs, particular jobs that matter. I would like to see two-thirds gender rule up being applied. It can be done. Baba, when you get there, there's no escape. Because I'll make sure that you apply it on behalf of the women of Kenya. You are in safe hands. As I conclude, as I conclude, remember, COVID is not gone. It is still here with us. 
let's be careful. Let's be careful. Let's not relax. I know I'm not wearing mask right now because I'm talking to you. Let's continue wearing the mask, washing our hands, keeping the distance where we can, and doing the right thing because we don't know. And I wish all of you good health. I wish all of you God's blessings. And I wish all of you well in this nation. Until we meet again very soon in your counties. Thank you and may God bless you. Now he get to me. Maida, for that great speech that you have made to us, the advice, the counseling, and the wonderful words that you have given to us that has energized us as we go back to our places so that to ensure that the things that women have asked for is what they are going to get. Nilikuwa nasikiza sana kila mmoja leongea hapa siku ya leo. Siku ya leo. And your excellency